Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclone Soz, and here is your weather forecast update for March 4th, 2024. In today's update, four parts. We're going to be taking a look at the monsoon and coral sea cyclone forecast, first of all. Then we're going to be jumping down to far northern Queensland for a look at the heavy rainfall that will extend right down the Queensland coastline. Then we're going to be looking at a cyclone that could form in the West Australian waters. The GFS actually calling for three systems possible there. And then we're going to be looking at a drenching amount of rainfall, up to 400 millimetres that could fall over the gold fields in the interior region of Western Australia. If you want to skip around to each part of the video, then there's timestamps in the description or just click the scroll bar and the video uh, down below. So starting things off up north, we're going to be taking a look at a developing tropical low situation which could form in the Coral Sea. There's two models, the ECMWF and the Access G3, that are now on board with this becoming a tropical cyclone in the next 10 days, albeit a very weak tropical cyclone. But this monsoon trough and developing system will enhance the rainfall that we're going to be seeing across northern Queensland. The strengthening monsoon trough over the Gulf of Carpentaria is expected to form at least one tropical low, at least over the Gulf of Carpentaria or the Coral Sea, but this monsoon will likely fire more tropical lows in the West Australian waters. In short, we're heading into a very active period of cyclone activity towards the latter part of March. Now we're going to switch things over to the forecast outlook. We're going to start things off with rainfall and we're going to skip right out to around Saturday the 9th of March. Using the Access G3 model first, you can see we've got this monsoon trough that's going to start to develop across the northern parts of Australia at about 12 degrees north, that latitude line. And as you get to the evening hours of Saturday, the rainfall is really going to pick itself up. We do start to see this low pressure areas start to swirl around north of the Cape York Peninsula. Uh, that really does start to develop quite nicely Saturday evening and then into Sunday morning, the 10th of March. And it's going to be by around Monday when we start to see this low really start to tighten itself up. And by Monday, it looks like the rainfall really does increase for the northern parts of the Northern Territory and then into Queensland. Now, there's a lot of rainfall expected across the tropical far northern Queensland area north of Townsville. We're going to take a look at that in a couple of minutes. I just want to get this cyclone coverage out of the way for those interested in just the cyclone. But for those uh, concerned with weather more generally across far northern Queensland. I will get to that in around a couple of minutes time. But we're going to start off things with this tropical low up here. So by Monday, looks like it's really trying to develop. It really isn't as strong at this point, but it's an enhanced monsoon that we're looking at at this time. Really strong gusty winds towards the northern side of the system. We're talking winds probably gusting about 35 knots at this point. And well, in fact, maybe about 40 knots at this point, 70 to 75 kilometers an hour by the looks of things up in the northern parts of this tropical low. A really defined monsoon trough as well by the looks of things and reciprocated perfectly amongst other forecast models. The ECM will be uh, very much in line with what the Access G3 model has to say. The GFS is a little bit more unsure. They're calling for this monsoon to be wrapping itself up actually over the Coral Sea. So if a tropical low was to form, it probably uh, spit itself out around Vanuatu and New Caledonia sort of area. But again, the Access and the ECM will be very much on board with a similar situation here, which means I'm with a high degree of confidence saying that we're expecting something to uh, wrap itself up here early next week or at least this weekend at the earliest time. The tropical low looks like, well, there's two tropical lows, actually one over the Coral Sea and one over the northern parts of the Northern Territory. We're looking at about Cape Wessel sort of here, Nullumbai. Now that's expected to spin itself up by Tuesday. It's same with this one here, but it really doesn't get itself going. And it looks like it's a fully fledged tropical cyclone by Tuesday evening. This has been in the forecast for the last couple of days at this point. Now, the fact that there's a tropical low right here tells me that the Access G3 is still very uncertain in terms of timing, placement, and also intensity of this system. This is basically impossible to happen due to an effect called the Corellius effect, which is just upper level atmospheric physics that not even I understand. So it's some confusing stuff. Uh, but this is a very unlikely situation to happen. So the Access G3 model is acting with a high degree of uncertainty here. But considering that both the Access and the Eastern Mobile have a tropical low or cyclone equivalent system um, in a very similar part uh, geographically speaking, nine days out. That gives me a very high degree of confidence in saying that we're expecting a tropical low up here, hence the video's title and hence the information that I'm presenting. Things can change over the next week. It's not going to be until about Thursday or Friday, the 7th or the 8th of March, that we really have a deep understanding on what's actually going to be happening up here. But we know what's going to be happening, like the more broad details. Enhanced rainfall, gusty winds and so forth, starting from around Thursday or Friday. And that's going to really kick itself up into high gear by Sunday, Monday, Tuesday 
and then into Wednesday. Now, this cyclone could die off as it uh, crosses the Cape York Peninsula uh, on about Wednesday, or it could move into the Coral Sea and become quite strong. There's still a lot of untapped resources in terms of cyclone energy in the Coral Sea. Uh, so by Wednesday 13th, forecast is really uncertain, and I'm not going to be commenting on the tropical cyclone's traje trajectory. But I mean, just look at this. A lot of rainfall can be expected to be driven around this tropical cyclone. It looks like it's going to be in quite an unfavorable environment in terms of mid-level humidity at this point, but still a lot of rainfall expected to be moving around the system. And that's kind of a common trend um, as this moves through the northern parts of Australia. It looks like a drier than usual monsoon trough, but areas around where these tropical lows form, so the extreme northern parts of far northern Queensland, I mean, you're looking at rainfall accumulations over the next 10 days of at least 400 millimetres in some places, and I would say maybe five to 600 millimetres in one or two locations as well, especially the further north you get. And that's reciprocated across the Eastern BF model as well, and I believe the GFS as well to a degree, so a high degree of certainty in terms of how much rainfall is expected across far northern Queensland. Now, as promised, we're going to be taking a look at the far northern Queensland rainfall situation only, and that's going to be over the next six or seven days around the Cairns area. And as I've said, the strengthening monsoon trough, which will have the potential to throw out a cyclone or two, will enhance the already moderate to heavy rainfall occurring across far northern Queensland over the next week. Now, it is March. It's the wettest month of the year up here. Uh, we can be expecting a lot of rainfall, that's for sure. But it looks like over the next 10 days, it's going to be wetter than usual. And case in point, I believe it's going to be from Tuesday onwards that we start to see this moderate to heavy rainfall come ashore. Because of the model's resolution, which is how much data that they can crunch on a square kilometre basis, the rainfall forecast, especially between Cardwell and Cairns, can be very difficult considering its mountainous um, nature. So areas around Belend and Kerr, so forth, pick up about three times as much rainfall as what the forecast models generally expect. Uh, so I'll give you a final number and you can multiply it by three, but certainly there will be areas that pick up substantially more than one what is forecast and there will be always areas that pick up absolutely nothing compared to what's forecast as well so models they're just there as a guidance tool they are they're generally fairly accurate but they are only there as a guidance and they can actually uh, throw up a couple of inconsistencies as well the access g3 model definitely it looks like tuesday expect 50 millimeters or so along parts of the coast here same with wednesday up to 20 to 50 millimeters by thursday things look like they're getting quite wet as well and definitely by friday as well looks like the rainfall is really starting to be driven ashore here as per the access G3 forecast. Now, Saturday has been the wettest day on the forecast for quite a while because that's when that monsoon really does pick up. But the rainfall has shifted from being uh, Cardwell to Cairns focused now to being Cairns to up towards Cooktown focused. So the Dane tree around Mossman, they could certainly pick up a lot of rainfall as well. We're talking 400 millimetres over the next 10 days. Once again, that's probably about half a month's worth of rainfall, but falling over a week long um, period, you're certainly talking about twice as much rainfall ex than expected. There'll be consistent totals above 100 millimetres every day for the next 10 days up in far northern Queensland. That's basically a guarantee at this stage. And in areas that are already saturated, still from Cyclone Jasper, Cyclone Curly, as well as you head further south, and just the amount of rainfall that they've had over the past two weeks, this amount of rainfall will be causing flooding to a degree. Again, just consistent, moderate to heavy rainfall over the next couple of days, especially Thursday to Friday, before it shifts further north by around Sunday and Monday. Still, you'll be seeing those light to moderate falls Monday Tuesday and Wednesday, but north of Cooktown is where it's going to be focused as this tropical cyclone and monsoon trough really does start to wrap itself up. And that's once again reciprocated amongst the Eastern Bear forecast model as well, which is a great forecast model to use. And also to a degree, the GFS model. The GFS generally not as accurate in terms of long range rainfall, and they're generally not an accurate model in terms of rainfall full stop. But I mean, when you're seeing consistent among all the forecast models, two to 400 millimeters, that gives me a great degree of certainty in expecting how much rainfall or saying how much rainfall is expected for these locations. Now, like I said, multiply these rainfall totals by two or three, and that's when you get the rainfall totals for some of the wettest parts of Australia. So if you're taking a look at a worst case scenario, the Access G3 model around Belend and Kerr, where you're expecting 150 to 200 millimetres, expect 600 in the next week. That's not an outlandish predict prediction. I know a lot of you up here, the rainfall can be very hit and miss, and these forecasts can be quite confusing when they're, when um, the forecast flip-flops from day to day, but rainfall is generally very hard to predict in the tropics of Australia. It's going to be coastal-based. It will get itself jammed up against the first range of hills or mountains along the coastline, so expect a lot of rainfall in valleys, and also expect flash flooding and riverine flooding to materialise from this rainfall event. There's going to be a lot of onshore flow driven ashore, but yeah, Thursday to Saturday is when the bulk of the rainfall is going to be 
be coming ashore, I believe over the next three days, there's only about 50 to 100 millimeters forecast, yep. And then over the next five days, that jumps up to about 200 millimeters for some locations. So expect a widespread 150 to 200 millimeters Thursday to Saturday. There'll be a day where you might not get any rainfall, and then there'll be a day where you might get 80% of that forecast rainfall. Like I said, it's nothing unusual up here to be receiving 200 millimetres in a couple of days, or even 500 millimetres in a couple of days. We're talking about one of the wettest spots in the world, mind you. It's just the fact that it's already a very saturated part of Australia, and when you're approaching your 100% of the annual rainfall total already up here, this is where we're really starting to see the concern of damaging uh, flooding conditions to really start to unfold. So I wouldn't be surprised if severe weather warnings and flooding alerts are raised by the Bureau of Meteorology. And as uh, I keep on saying, just heed all necessary warnings and cautions from your Shire office and also from the Bureau of Meteorology. There'll be daily coverage on this channel, so make sure you are subscribed and also leave a like on the video while you're at it. I don't think I've plugged the channel enough lately, getting some great views, but not enough subscribers. So if you haven't already, then please do join uh, the party here. And also click the join button down below because you get a special mention at the end of every single video. So after that shameless plug, I've decided to combine all the WA things um, in one video because sadly only 5% of my audience is from Western Australia. So if you've got West Australian friends, then share the channel with them. We've got a forming tropical low around the Cocos Keeling Islands. Now that's going to be uh, separate from the other part of this video where we're talking about some intense rainfall across central Western Australia. We could be seeing up to two years worth of rainfall actually fall across parts of the South Interior and the Goldfields. So if you do have mining, uh, FIFO concerns or property concerns in the central parts of Western Australia, which I know is a very niche category of people, considering it's one of the most remote parts of the world, then this is kind of a concerning forecast for you. Uh, a huge amount of rainfall is expected. So we will start things off, of course, with the tropical cyclone, considering it is definitely the most major of the threats. Um, we're expecting quite a lot to happen with this tropical cyclone, still quite a decent amount of uncertainty regarding its forecast, but tropical low 08, you're located towards the northwest of West Island right now. It's gonna be wrapping itself up over the coming couple of days. I'm gonna play this through quite rapidly because it does take its merry time to form. Now this will get the next name on the Australian naming list, which I'm gonna to need to check here after Lincoln is Megan. Um, it is expected to get the next name on the naming list. The coral sea systems, if they become tropical cyclones, will likely get the names after um, Megan, which again, I completely forgot to check, so I'm not sure of them off the top of my head, but Megan, the next tropical cyclone name, and it looks like Megan has a good shot of being named by Thursday. However, what we're gonna run into here in terms of an issue that might not get this system named Megan or in the Australian region at all is the fact that it's gonna be towards the west of 90 degrees east, which is the longitude line of where the Bureau of Meteorology cuts off on monitoring these systems. So this system looks like it's gonna become a tropical cyclone by the looks of things at um, 88 degrees east, which I believe is going to be uh, just two degrees east, yeah, two, uh, maybe about 100 and 150 kilometers towards the east, or, or the west rather, of where the Bureau of Meteorology cuts off on naming systems. So this is actually going to be monitored by the me uh, meteorology officers in Madagascar and um, Mauritius over here, even though it's much closer to Australia. Still though, no Australian cyclone threat at this point. Point. This is not going to be impacting Australian areas at all, but it might miss out on getting named Megan at all. And the near record run of nameless tropical cyclones, or the nameless uh, West Australian tropical cyclone season will likely continue. As we get into Friday and Saturday, this system does look like it continues intensifying slowly. By Monday or Tuesday, it looks like it's approaching severe tropical cyclone status, but this is way out of Australia at this point. And by Wednesday, it's already racing towards Rodriguez and Mauritius, where it could be a very long-term cyclone threat over there. Now, the axis has been sensible for once, and it's not throwing out multiple tropical cyclones as it sometimes does with these monsoon troughs. But look at the GFS model from Saturday next week. We've got a tropical cyclone here, or tropical low here, which would be 08U or Megan. We've got a tropical cyclone over here, but if you keep playing it through by Monday and Tuesday, two tropical cyclones and a third one developing around Timor. And by Wednesday, it looks like we've got three tropical lows in the West Australian areas, which would certainly make up for the dismal activity that we've seen there. Thankfully, we haven't seen seen any major land impacts across Western Australia yet, bar tropical cyclone Lincoln, which really was quite minor, and to be frank, disappointing in terms of rainfall. But yeah, this would be some good news in terms of driving rainfall for the 
uh, Kimberley region, which have only had just a little bit of rainfall so far this wet season. It's been quite a disappointing wet season for Western Australia, and I think everyone can agree with me there. It's going to be central Western Australia, though, that cop it. It's going to be a 10-day weather event that we're seeing here, up to 400 millimetres expected, and I'm not exaggerating here either. I've never seen this amount of rainfall expected across central Western Australia that's not cyclone-based in five years of looking at windy.com. So this is quite a tremendous amount of rainfall. From next Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, or well, this Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, it's just going to be constant thunderstorms across the interior associated with a west coast trough and a trough line extending from a low pressure system around Carnarvon. And these are going to drive some pretty strong thunderstorms as well. A lot of them will likely be severe. Um, and they will be just inland storms north of Meriden, Norseman, and Mount Magnet, that sort of area. And these will just dominate the interior parts of Western Australia. Now, they could actually impact Perth later next week, where we could be seeing some um, rainfall for the Perth area. In fact, up to 100 millimetres expected. This is much needed rainfall. Um, this forecast that we're seeing from the Eastern Relief model, where we're seeing all of Western Australia dominated by up to 25 millimetres, and in some places up to 100 millimetres or 150 millimetres, this is just gold. Everyone in Western Australia can agree that this is desperately needed rainfall. This is not going to be the stuff that causes catastrophic flooding, but this it, this is just making me um, ache. If this doesn't um, materialise, then this is going to be truly quite a sad event uh, for Western Australia because we do need this rainfall. This will kick off a great cropping season and it will just fill rivers and dams ahead of the uh, farming season. This is just great rainfall and it's not sort of the rainfall that's going to be cutting off um, infrastructure and roads. So it will still be flooding from 100 millimetres of rain in the interior, especially if it happens in a one hour period, which it could do, but it's um, definitely the sort of rainfall that we do need. What we don't need is what the Access G3 model wants. I mean, look at this, 500 millimetres across the central parts of Western Australia. That's ridiculous quantities of rainfall. Thankfully, I don't think that's going to, uh, to materialise, but once again, just much needed rainfall that we do need across Western Australia and I'm holding on for the next 10 days where you might see some rainfall in Perth because the thunderstorm events, as I think we can all agree, were quite dismal down here. But yeah, anyways, really starting to waffle here. Thank you so much for your company this Monday morning. Public holiday over in Western Australia, so enjoy your Labor Day long weekend because I certainly am, that's for sure. I've enjoyed my sleep and I think I'm going to go straight back to bed and achieve nothing today. But yeah, thank you so much for watching this video. We'll give a special shout out to the Cyclone Soil sponsors on screen this five year. Let's see if we can push that number up to 10. So if you haven't already, please do click the join button down below. It's a small price to pay and it supports the software that this video is made with, the windy.com subscriptions and also my editing software too. The photo behind is taken of Strickland Bay on Rottnest Island, January 24th, 2023. I love that walk. I think of that walk quite a lot. That was a great walk indeed. And a beautiful, beautiful beach. So if you're ever over in Western Australia, check out Rottnest and check out Strickland's because it is a fantastic beach. That's for sure. But yeah, that's all for me and I'll catch you on the next storm. Goodbye.